Welcome to this Junior Cycle Higher Level Maths Revision video. In this video, we're going to focus on solving linear equations. We're going to first look at the difference between expressions and equations. We're then going to solve some simple linear equations and then finally look at solving equations with fractions that then become linear equations. It is so important that you understand the difference between expressions and equations. An expression is a statement or instruction. It is no equal sign. And most importantly, you cannot change an expression. So for example, if I was given 2x plus 3, we would have to work with that as is. The things you can be asked about expressions are to evaluate, so find the value. In that case, they would have to tell you what x is. So it might say evaluate 2x plus 3, when x is 1. So you would substitute in the value you're given. It might ask you to expand if there's brackets in the expression. It could ask you to simplify. That could have brackets and multiple terms. Or you could be asked to factorize an expression. It's important here that variables can generally take any value. Compare that then to an equation. An equation is all about balance, and I've put an old fashioned scale balance there on the top. What's really important to understand is the equation tells us nothing except that one side is equal to the other. So when we have an equation, we see an equals, which creates a left hand side and then a right hand side. The equals is the middle of our scale. It is so important to know that you can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So as long as we keep that balance, because once we keep the balance, that's all that matters. So we can add a number to both sides. We can subtract a number from both sides. We can divide. We can multiply. We can square. We can do anything as long as you do it to both sides. So it's all about balance. Generally, we talk about these as taking, sorry, generally we talk about variables and equations as taking only certain values. So generally we're, we're asked to solve for the variable. So to find the answer that works for that equation, or you could be asked to rearrange, that's manipulation of formula. In some cases, in identities, we are given that an equation is true for all variables and our focus then moves on to unknown coefficients. An example of an equation is 2x plus 3 equals 9. So in that case, we could work it through and figure out a specific value of x that works in that equation. And what I mean by works is that will keep the balance that will keep it equal. So for example, if I subbed in five, so two times five plus three is 13 equals nine. Five doesn't work, okay? So X cannot be five. We have our methods of working through to figuring out what X is, and we'll do that in our coming examples. So linear equations are equations where the variable is of degree one. So that's the highest power is one. Now we're very lazy in math. So we never write this as a power one. So basically we end up with just an X. So that's all we have. It is the same as an X to the power of one. But when you see just an X and there's no higher power, that means we're dealing with a linear equation. It's so important that you can identify when we're talking about a linear equation or a linear function because it'll make your life so much easier. We also deal with linear equations differently to how we deal with other equations. Let's start with a nice, simple two step linear equation. So when we deal with linear equations, we get all the letters on the left and numbers on the right. If something is on the wrong side, it needs to be gotten rid of. So here is my letter side, letters on the left and numbers. So then is there anything that's on the wrong side? And yeah, that plus five should be on the other side. That plus five is wrong. So I'm gonna get rid of it. So I'm gonna make it zero. So I'm gonna take it away. 
Now, am I allowed to just take away a five? Well, remember, these are equations. It's all about balance. So as long as I balance it by also subtracting a five from the other side, that's perfect. So we end up here with 2x equals 11 minus 5, which is 6. My final piece to do then is if 2x is equal 6, I want to figure out what x is. So when they say solve, they want to figure out, well, what is the answer for one of those variables? So in this case, the variable is x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That gives me x equals 3. And that's my final answer. So x equals 3. This is called the vertical balancing method because we are doing it vertically. Sometimes students like to do this um, not vertically <laughs> to save space. So the next line will be take away a 5 from both sides. So the next line will be 11 take away 5. So they're doing the same thing. They're not writing the 0 and they're showing it horizontally as opposed to vertically. We then have uh, 2x equals 6 and I always say keep that division like this. I would never ever stray from that because as it gets complicated you can easily divide by the wrong number. So if you're not a fan of all this space that vertical balancing requires, you don't have to show it as long as that's what you're doing. So example two, let's look at a three step linear equation. Now it's three steps because there are letters and numbers on both sides. So letters on the left, numbers on the right. So this is on the wrong side and this is on the wrong side. I am going to work left to right, that's the way I like to work. So I'm gonna add a sixth here. Uh, because I want to get rid of that minus 6. Now, I want to add a 6 to the other side to keep my balance, but it's important that you add the 6, which is a number, to the number, not to the 5x. So remember, you can only add like terms. So we wouldn't add the 6 onto the 5x. So we get 11x equals 18 and 6 is 24 plus 5x. Now, the 5x is on the wrong side, so I'm going to get rid of that by subtracting it, and I'll also then subtract it from the other side. So now we have 6x, then we have an equals. Often students forget or lose their equals, just be careful here. And that's 24. Divide both sides by 6, and we get a final answer of x equals 4. If you're not a fan of the vertical balancing, we have 11x minus 6 equals 18 plus 5x. We can do 11x equals 18 plus 6 plus 5x. And then we get 11x minus 5x equals 24, which is 6x equals 24. So the same thing, but we're showing it slightly differently. What happens is we are adding and subtracting from both sides. But what it might look like is when the minus 6 goes across the equals, it ends up being a plus 6. So we end up doing the opposite because that's how we got rid of it. If we had a minus 6, we added 6 to get rid of it. If we had a minus 5x, or well, sorry, actually we had a plus 5x. And when this came across, it became a minus 5x. So this is what it ends up looking like. It looks like we do the opposite to it. Here, the 6x, we divide both sides by 6 because 6x means 6 multiplied. So to work backwards, we're always doing the opposite. So example three, we're going to have a four-step linear equation. So now we have brackets. So it's always important to expand the brackets before we do any kind of solving or moving across the equals. So here we have 2x plus 6 equals 18 minus 5x. I'm going to take away a 6 from both sides. Um, you can do both pieces at once. So if you want to combine these two steps, that's perfect. Um, I wouldn't suggest it. If you're using vertical balancing, you might as well do it twice. We're now going to add that 5x to both sides. 
and we have 7x equals 12. Now, to finish this off, we're going to divide both sides by 7. And often students go, oh, I'm wrong, because <laughs> it's a fraction. Um, it's not wrong. That's absolutely perfect. I would always suggest that you leave this as a top heavy fraction unless you are told otherwise. Some students love mixed fractions. I find mixed fractions can cause problems because of how they need to be entered into the calculator. So I would say unless they tell you otherwise, leave it as a top heavy fraction. Let's look at a more complex linear equation. We're asked to solve this equation here. So this equation has three different brackets and also some negatives which can cause problems. What I would suggest that whenever you see a minus in front of a bracket, to help you, you can put in a one. Remember, we're just too lazy to write that one. We are now talking about minus one times everything in the bracket. So we're left with minus 1x, or just minus x if you prefer, plus 3, minus 1x, minus 2, equals <clears throat> 2x, minus 2. What often happens at this point is students then try to do vertical balancing um, before simplifying it. Remember, it's always easier to work with the simpler version. I, re I really think that if you try to do any balancing now, the balancing won't make sense because there's too much there. It's too easy to get confused. So let's simplify each side. Now, the right hand side is fine because it can't be simplified anymore. For the left hand side, we can add the x terms and we can add the number terms. So we end up with minus 2x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. Now, I like getting my letters on the left, my numbers on the right. I'm going to take away a 1 from both sides. And I'm left with minus 2x is equal to 2x minus 3. I'm now going to take away a 2x from each side because I want just numbers on the right hand side. And we're left with, I have a huge amount of space here, but it should be minus 4x equals. Example 5, our final example. Let's look at an equation with fractions. Now, oftentimes students are not fan of fractions and that's perfect. However, remember we have an equation and we can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides of this equation, which means when we have an equation with fractions, we can get rid of the fractions. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what the lowest common denominator of the current denominators are. Now, this is quite straightforward because the denominators are all numerical. They're not algebraic, so they're not variables. So if I had 4, 3, and 2, what is the lowest common denominator? So the lowest common denominator is 12. Now, if you picked a denominator that was a common denominator, but not the lowest, it will not affect, um, it won't affect the answer when we're talking about equations. If we were talking about an expression, it will affect it. I would say try aim for the lowest, but if you don't get the lowest, so for example, if you use 24, it would still work. So I'm going to multiply each term, so each piece, by 12. The reason that I'm going to do each piece rather than each side, because it is the same thing, I'm just showing it differently, is because then we can do the cancelling and it's quite straightforward. So here we can see now we've cancelled each piece, we showed the cancelling, and now we just have to do multiplication. So we end up with 3 times 3x minus 1 plus 4 times 2x equals 5 times 6. Now we just have an equation with brackets and we no longer have fractions. Let's expand the brackets. 9x minus 3 plus 8x equals 30. Remember to simplify. 
So we end up with 17x minus 3 equals 30. I'm going to add a 3 to both sides. And we get 17x equals 33. And our final step is to divide both sides. You'll notice that a lot of our questions in this, we didn't get nice answers. And that's okay. We're not always going to get nice answers. Sometimes we are and that's great. But if you don't, don't worry or don't spend a lot of time looking for an answer or a, or a problem or an issue that you think is there. Because one, there may not be an issue. And two, it's worth so few marks that wasting five minutes to get a mark makes no sense. So we're going to simply leave this as 33 over 17. Remember, if you turn it to decimal, you're going to have to round it. And I would strongly recommend not to use mixed fractions.